Hey guys, got a really quick and easy video for you today. Over on the other channel, which I'll put a link to Schrodinger's Box Quantum Mechanics, we just finished our Diagnosis and Understanding of Alternators series. And one of the things that I forgot to do in that series is actually a very important test for those of you guys with an oscilloscope. It's called the AC Ripple Test. So what we're going to do over on that channel is I'm, of course, going to do it in much more detail and talk about a lot more of the symptoms that you would look for that would indicate a ripple test. But for this video, just because a lot of you guys I know use a scope and you just want a really basic, quick overview of how you would do this test on a scope, that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So let's get to a car, and this is going to be a car with a good alternator, and we're going to look at a good ripple test signal, and then we'll look at some things to look out for if your ripple test signal looks different. Going to put our positive lead right to the battery positive terminal on the alternator. Our negative is going to go to the battery negative. Super simple setup there. And let's start the car and I'll show you the settings. All right, we're going to go to the lab scope and we're going to choose volts DC. Of course, it's an AC ripple test and we'll take care of that in a second. So the first thing I want to do is go to coupling AC. That's going to force the meter to read the AC voltage. So as you can see now our voltage drops uh, well below. We can go to a, about a two volt scale. Let's start off there. We can see that we're near the bottom of the screen. We need to bring it up a little bit. And the other thing I want to do, I kind of like a pretty fast time frame with this. Um, let's try 50 milliseconds. I kind of like that, but I think 10 or 20 is going to be better. Ooh, that's pretty good right there. Looks like we can lower our scale. Oh, that looks great right there. Okay, this is a good output for our signal here. This really nice sine wave without any drop-offs. And the reason it's waving up and down and up and down like that is if we scale this out more, we see that actually there's, there's a lot more ripple here. So we're looking for two things. One of them is that the amplitude is very minimal. That we're not scaling above a half a volt in either direction. And the other thing we're looking at here is, let's expand that out, that we've got a consistent pattern with these little bumps here and that there's not a bunch of big dropouts and everything. Now if we look closely, we'll see a few spikes happen, a few voltage spikes occur. There's one there. There's a really high one we just saw there. So those are perfectly normal. So this is a really good pattern indicating that this alternator is functioning properly. Now since I can't show you a bad alternator, unfortunately, let's go to the dry erase board of knowledge. Look at what some bad signals would look like and also some indications that would set you in the direction to probably do a ripple test and suspect that the alternator may be causing a problem even if it's charging the battery. Okay, looking at what we just saw, we can draw out our graph. We had a zero point here. Um, our scale, we could put uh, 0.25 volts up here and negative 0.25 volts down here. And of course we saw that our ripple test looked something like this um, with, with some waviness to it, but we're really looking mostly at these particular ripples in here and we saw these occasional spikes like this, which is perfectly fine. And the reason we know this is a good ripple test is a couple of things. First of all, we've got consistency in the bumps here in our sine waves. And the second thing is the amplitude. We're never going above a quarter of a volt here, and we're well below a half a volt for sure in our amplitude. So those are our two indications that our ripple test has passed. So what would we look for in a bad ripple test? Well, we would look for two things. Okay, and those two things are uh, inconsistency in the ripple pattern with some dropouts, and we would also look at a change in the amplitude. And in some cases, you might even see both, by the way. So one of the first things we would look for is a ripple test that looks something like this, with these very obvious dropouts like that.
If we see something like this, it's very similar to an electric motor that has one of the commutators that have failed. This would be an indication that your ripple test has failed, the alternator is bad. Now the other thing that we would look for, and we may see it in conjunction with this possibly, would be a dramatic change in the amplitude. So if we were to notice something where, let's say we had a one volt scale here, and we had a total amplitude of over a volt on the ripple effect. So if we had something that looked more like this, we may still have those dropouts here, but something with a much bigger voltage amplitude, this would definitely be an indication that the ripple test has failed and the alternator is causing an issue and this may even be with the alternator still charging the battery, by the way, but this could cause some other symptoms, um, such as some dashboard indicator issues, speedometer issues. All right, so that is a very quick and dirty overview of the AC ripple test. So if you've got a oscilloscope, really quick and easy way of testing the alternator output. And you can see why also you would never be able to do that using a standard DVOM because even reading the AC voltage, you're never going to be able to do it at that rapid time frame. So hopefully that was helpful. For more information, you'll want to check out the full video at Schrodinger's Box Quantum Mechanics. We'll see you over there. Oh, and quick message for those of you guys in third world and developing nations. I am well familiar that you guys depend on that channel being available free for your education out there. Please send me a PM on this channel, get hold of me, leave a comment in this video or something. Uh, let me know what part of the world you're from, give me your email address through a private message, and I will hook you up for free as promised on that channel. So uh, check the description for the link. We'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.